from there, a high speed chase proceeded. Now, um, you know, as we left the bank, um, a cop happened to be driving by. And as we pulled out into the street, the cop bumped the back of the car and realized that he was uh, engaging uh, a bank robbery suspects and followed us up into a one way street. We pulled into this street, you know, and it was, it was like it was almost over before it started. And uh, we kind of all looked at each other. The cop got out the car, drew his gun, and we sat in the car. He told us to get out. Edward gunned it. We drove past him into another parking uh, in like area and um, switched cars. Now, it's early in the morning. There's really no other people in this particular parking area. So it's kind of obvious when we pull out, you know, three black guys in a navigator that, you know, is, there's something suspicious. So they kind of looked at us and as we drove by, they um, engaged us again and um, we got in a high speed chase. We were, uh, you know, we, we, we went from um, that particular area, which is in Ventura, hit the 101 freeway, headed north. Um, the, the chase lasted, I can't recall how long, but it seemed like an eternity. And I knew at this point that I wasn't gonna see the streets for a, a, for a minute. I knew I was gone. I mean, that was my last day of freedom at that point. Um, we drove for maybe, I don't know how many miles, and um, rain was coming down pretty hard. Uh, they, were, they threw a spike strip down on the freeway. We didn't see it. We ran over the spike strip. Uh, the car was at that point rolling on, on uh, four wheels, uh, four rims with no tires, with sparks flying. And, um, you know, it, we car, car being at it was raining, lost control, hit the center divider. I jumped out, jumped over the center divider, ran across the freeway, six lanes of traffic, jumped over another fence ran up the street and got arrested on the beach. It was nowhere else to run to. The helicopter was on us. There was multiple cop cars, probably over you know, 20 cop cars. Uh, Charlie never made it out the car. Edward never made it out the car. They had a canine inside the car before they could move and um, the canine subdued them and uh, everybody was arrested. Now, upon being arrested, everybody was separated. Um, you know, they asked you, you know, some questions, you know, about the bank robbery. I said, I, you know, I have nothing to say, uh, you know, Edward, I assumed, had said, he said he had nothing to say. And Charlie, I had assumed, well, you know, had said, hey, I don't have nothing to say. So, you know, we, we were uh, at that point put back together in the same room and they were listening and see what we were going to say. Nobody said anything. And then they took us to our pods. We were there in Ventura County Jail for maybe a couple of days. The feds picked the case up after that. And we went to FDC um, Los Angeles, which is downtown, and we proceeded to fight our case from there. Now, I hadn't really hung out with Charlie a whole lot prior to committing this bank robbery, so I didn't really know him that much as a person on the street. I just knew that, you know, he was pretty debonair, he dressed sharp, he uh, was, an, you know, an actor, he had, you know, some lady friends that kind of took care of him, he was pretty suave in that, in that nature, and, um, you know, was real clean, you know, was always, you know, was, was always a, a really dapper dude. So once we got locked, you know, locked up, you know, I've seen a different side of him. Um, you know, you, you, when you're in print, when you're in when you're in holding, you you get a cellmate, and you know you uh, you 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 have to share certain things with that particular person. Now, Charlie, being that you know, he told me he's from France, he spoke French, and um, you know he was black, but he said he was a black French. He, um, you know, he he had a little he had a little edge to himself, so people kind of you know, looked up to him to a degree and thought this guy was pretty sharp, you know. And so he conversed with a lot of the, the Europe guys from Europe that were locked up for various cases. He hung out with people who were kind of like educated and would talk French to them and, you know, and, 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 and kind of just associate himself more or less with being French rather than African. And there was, a, you know, quite a few Africans. Edward was African. Um, there was a lot of other African guys in there from like Nigeria, Ghana, different places in Africa, and they had their own little group that they hung out with. And so, um, you know, Charlie didn't really associate with them too much, but he kind of like, you know, this is himself from that particular culture. Well, anyways, um, you know, as time went by, you know, he had a couple of run-ins with his uh, cellmate. You know, he wasn't cleaning up or he wouldn't come out the cell. He would be in there too much and he, he you know, wouldn't, he wasn't showering every day like he was supposed to. You know, and I, you know, so a dude had me talk to him and I would tell him like, hey man, you know, you got to wash your ass, homie. You can't, this is prison. You, you got to wash your ass. You got to change your clothes out. You can't carry it like that up in here. You know, there's certain 
etiquette things to being in jail that you have to follow. So, you know, he kind of listened to me and respected me to a degree. So, you know, and I took care of him. You know, I had um, my girlfriend at the time putting money on his books. You know, if he needed stuff from commissary, I'd buy him commissary. And, um, you know, I, I kind of looked at him as, you know, somebody that, you know, had my back, even though I didn't know him that well, but we had, you know, bonded through committing this bank robbery. And, um, you know, as time went by, we got more and more, you know, information on our case as we were fighting it. And, um, you know, when, when, when I got my discovery is when I found out that Charlie had basically told them the whole case. You know, they, it was all laid out, 100 pages of documents that stated everything that happened from start to finish. How he met me, when he came to my house one time, when we went to go pick up the clothes that we committed the bank robbery in, a bunch of stuff that was really, I don't know why he even brought all that shit up, you know. But anyways, he told the whole story. So, you know, once I got my discovery back, I'm like, okay, this is a wash, you know. I'm going to have to go, I'm, I'm going to go on away for a while. I took the paperwork to him when I asked him, I'm like, man, you know, what the fuck is this? You know, I thought you kept your mouth shut. He's like, oh man, I was going to tell you Herc, you know, um, you know, he's always called me Irk, you know, because he couldn't pronounce Herc. So he said, Irk, Irk, yeah, man, I'm so sorry, man. You know, I, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to fix it, man. I'm going to fix it. I'm like, how the fuck you going to fix it, bro? You, you testif you basically testified on paper. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to take a deal. I can't fight this case. You know, it, it's, it's here in plain and, you know, in black and white. And, um, he, he thought that he could make up another story to get out of that story. This is how his mind worked. He didn't understand how the fuck the, the, the American jurisprudence worked over here. When you told on yourself, that was a confession. And when there was evidence, basically you're convicted, you know. But anyways, he uh, proceeded to try to fight the case after he had already told the whole story. Um, you know, and I and, and after he after I seen that paperwork and kind of seen what direction this was going, I distanced, I started distancing myself from him. I didn't really hang out with him. I didn't really say too much to him after that. Um, you know, he he kind of started doing his own thing, and then I got transferred to another housing facility in San Bernardino, and then I got transferred to another facility in California City, and I, I just I lost contact with him after that point. Um, but before we actually, I got transferred, you know, he had, um, while we were still fighting our case, you know, back and forth on court, uh, court dates, I would see him sometimes in a holding tank. And he had said that he was gonna fight his case and go to trial. And they actually offered him seven years because he had no record. He had no, uh, you know, prior criminal convictions, but he, 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 you know, he thought that he could beat the case. You know, I told him, I said, man, look, man, you know, I'm not really fucking with you, but just a word of advice, man, take the deal. You know, otherwise you're looking at 25 years. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm go in there and tell him this, I'm gonna say this, you know, I'm gonna get the evidence suppressed. I said, all right, man, you know, whatever, whatever you decide to do, that's on you, you know, but I'm telling you right now, take the deal. He didn't take the deal. I took my deal, Edward took his deal. He got like seven years, I took my deal. You know, they tried to give me 12. I, I studied in a law library and found some case law knocked two years off my sentence in spite of my attorney, which was a public pretender that didn't want me to fight that case. Just, you know, she wanted me just to lay down. I knocked two years off my case, so I actually got 10 years instead of 12 years. Um, Charlie went to trial and he got, I believe, like 18 years, you know, because he did 14, so I'm assuming he got it roughly by 18 years. So, uh, you know, I heard he got the time through Edward and, um, you know, I didn't see him for a while, you know, I didn't, after he got sentenced, he was in one facility, I was in another. Um, right before I got sent to Longpock USP, he showed up at the last facility I was at before I got, um, you know, transferred to go do my time, which was, uh, I believe, San Bernardino. And um, he just looked beat up, he looked tired, you know. We made eye contact and um, I looked at him, he looked at me, and um, we didn't say nothing to each other, you know. I, I was, I had pretty much already closed that chapter in my life and was working on bettering myself as a person. I was doing a lot of reading, a lot of meditation. I was focused on getting out at that point already, even though I had to do 10 years and trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, you know, and I really, I didn't associate with anybody that was talking about committing crimes or anybody who was just talking about bullshit. I, I, I had already pretty much changed my 
whole mindset so that I wouldn't repeat this cycle. So, um, you know, Charlie went and did his time. I went and did my time. Edward went and did his time. 